It's crazy because the night started off so good. Mm -hmm. It did. Y'all having so a good pleasant. time. So many wild nights start off like that. Up, oh, some people are joining us. What up, though? My name is Diara Kilpatrick, and you are here for another episode of the Diara from Detroit After Show. Today, I am joined by my friend Brian Terrell Clark, who plays T, and my sis from the D, Claudia Logan, who plays Crazy Moni. Welcome, y'all. What up, though? What, what up, up, though? Ooh. Let's get into it. I know. Episode <sighs> two. So we're off to the races. Yeah, things are heating up. Like, we know she's on to something now, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So Diara is moving solely off her intuition. You know, it's like she has a feeling. She has this discernment, and she's going with it. I don't know if we'll call it discernment this quickly this quick, or this okay. soon. We'll call it more delusion. <laughs> but, you know, people are so here for it. is Diara Bricklin the poster child for Delulu Girls Everywhere, or is she just an amateur detective, a budding amateur detective. I think initially it's given. It's given to Lulu. It's it's given. And go it looks go to cute sleep. On you. It looks really cute. It's on given. You. It's given. I'm gonna be honest. It's given. You need sleep and you got some good D. That's mm. what it's given. You got and some, that is the and recipe that combination, for delusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it just so happens that she's not crazy. She's not crazy about this particular thing. She's yes, not. yes. Because the Russian said, where is Deontay? And I thought he shot you. Yeah, I was yeah. really scared. I was like, oh my God, this whole time, like, you walking around with a wound? <laughs> I really have to say, I love the divorce party. <laughs> it was just, first of all, really fun to shoot a lot yeah. of different ladies. I think that's also carried into the whole story of this multifaceted room of women who were able to just come together on like a central topic of healing and yeah. like, like raising each other up, just coming from different backgrounds. That yeah. was really fun. And I got my hot Cheetos. Like, that was it. I also kind of love that they all loved Mary J. Shout out to Mary. Mary. Yes. The voice yes. of the broken black woman sometimes. <laughs> okay. Like, sometimes you need a good soundtrack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they all was rocking Mary. I think it was a great choice. Did you ever think of a different artist? It was always Mary J. I mean, yeah. I do think it is significant that people think of Mary J. Blige as like the struggle of anthem singer. I loved also that since we went back to the 90s, she's an artist who was popping in the 90s, but mm -hmm. also is still super relevant today. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's such a good juxtaposition between that party and the party Diara decides the to go to. The second divorce party. The yeah. second divorce party. I think it says a lot about her character too, right? Mm -hmm. So she's like, she's going after this Chris. Now we got this new idea, Chris Deontay. Mm -hmm. But actually she's discovering herself. Yes. She decides to leave like this given path that all these black women are on at this party. And she goes, mm, yeah, I'm broken too, but I'm gonna take a different journey. And in, in seeking this guy, she finds something else about herself. Diara goes from one divorce party to a very different divorce party, yes. where she really embarks on like this self-exploration. She kind of goes down this rabbit hole doing things she probably never even thought she would do like BDSM play with the dominatrix, you know, as one does right. on a Friday night. But maybe she's been suppressing some of these things. So this leads me to my to a question for you, Claudia. Because I wonder if it's the same experience. Like, I feel like growing up in Detroit, there was a lot of emphasis on like, you need to be a good girl. Mm. You need to go to college. Mm -hmm. You need to do these things. Yeah. Do you feel like that burden of, as a black woman, especially because we often get judged yeah. so much more harshly or the for consequences sure. for things can be so much more harsh. Yeah. Do you ever feel, I don't know, like the good black girl um, thing has prevented you from any kind of wild... <laughs> now we're talking to Types me. sexual exploration. <laughs> we're talking to me. Yeah. But no, um, I, I totally agree. I think not even just Detroit, I think any city, mm -hmm. and it could like go from region to region, that black women, we're already born into a hypersexuality that we didn't even ask for. Yeah. So I think our family or whatever household that we're in is like doing their best to make that a complete 180. So we're in the mindset of like, oh, when you go out into the world, no, you got to do this. You don't do that because they're already going to want to put it on you anyway. Mm -hmm. But as time has gone on and things have evolved and this generation is just so free in their sexuality and wanting to find pleasure at the core of it all. I think that's where it is, mm -hmm. pleasure. And mm -hmm. we have been stunted from that because we're trying to keep up a good girl role. Or even, you know, not even, you know, I still got the good grades, but you know, sometimes I want to be in the streets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like having a balance as well as knowing that that pleasure has consent and is safe. I just thought that scene was just so good. I wanted to be there. You wanted to be there. <laughs> I want to be in the space. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool as a character to see her go there mm -hmm. because it seems like whatever was going on in her marriage, whatever it was, wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And we still aren't exactly sure all right, the details. Right. Oh, it's loaded, child. You know what I mean? But it's so cool to see her go, 
I'm not sitting at that party. I'm actually gonna go to this place, and now that I'm here, I'm gonna explore some things for yes. myself. Cause she does take the molly. Yeah. And she does, you know, have this moment with Mistress Hot Sauce. I think it says a lot about the freedom that she wants to have in this moment. I wanna ask you, what do you feel like black exploration, aside from sexuality, looks like, feels like? I think it looks different for every black right. woman. I think what's important is what you said, is like giving yourself permission to put your pleasure on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Because of course, black women, we all know, we serve our community, right. we serve our families, but sometimes we forget about our own pleasure. Really figuring out what feels good to you and moving in the direction of that. Of course, safely and with consent. Yes. For me, I really like I'm not basic or old or sad. I like Megan Thee Stallion. I just don't know what she's always talking about. For me, <laughs> that can be true. Do y'all have favorite lines of the week? I feel like it's just so Detroit to say, y'all got yak. <laughs> We're having a funeral for my marriage. Is that all right with you? Y'all got yak. That's something my dad would say. Really? Yak. My dad calls it yak. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a Detroit player right there. Yeah. One of my favorite lines from that last episode was, everybody should mind their business. Yeah. That's the job, right? Mm -hmm. So like, what's the exact line? Minding your business this is a full-time full job, job, and job. everyone should stay employed. Yeah. That's the line. <laughs> that's the line. And right now, DR is not is not holding down her job. She's not holding down her <laughs> full-time job. Well, that's yeah. the question of the series, in a way. It's yeah. like, as a community, do we mind our own business, or do we get in there and do we fix some of these problems that we have? Because you know in our community, if you want to do a wellness check on certain people, in your family, would you want to call the police? To no. Send them after Absolutely them? not. Absolutely not. So maybe at some point you'll call Diara. Uh, I love okay, that idea. all right. And we, do, and we do say in the school all the time, if you see something, say, say something. something. But we did not say go into the sex club <laughs> and argue with a Russian with a gun. I think also mm. there's like, there's mm. entry. Is Diara, and maybe Moni too, like, is there a slight attraction to the danger? That's what it is. Because y'all have your normal lives and like maybe y'all are tired of the normal lives. Like, mm. is there something attractive about? 100%. Yeah. I danger. think that they end up being drawn to the thrill yes. of the Even danger. Even if we don't end up successful the first time, right? Yeah. It's just like, wow, we got this far. This is crazy. OK, so I want to know what the viewers think. Find us in the comments, wherever we are. If you see me in a grocery store, you could tell me. If you see Claudia at the BDSM club, you could tell her. How should Yara move forward? And we want to know just how far you would go to get the actual truth. Mm. So why y'all think on that? Cue up the next episode and see what Diara decides to do. We out.